Hello, Todd. Oh, no. What's the problem? Every time you start off with, hello, Todd, it's going to be one of those passive-aggressive, condescending conversations where everybody thinks Palin's smart and everybody thinks Todd's dumb. <laughs> I know, that's hilarious. Why do you think that is? You know you're not as cute as you think you are. You really don't, you know, you're really not the reason for all the views. No, nah, but everybody tends to think I am. <sighs> so, what is it? Well, what do you, uh, strap matches? Yeah, what about strap matches? You, uh... You think the buckle matters? Well, of course the buckle matters. The buckle's at all that matters. It's buckle, 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 man. The buckle makes you win like all the time. Well, if the buckle makes you win all the time, then it matters. But do you win all the time in the buckle? You never, you never, uh, you never win without the buckle? Oh, I win a lot of matches without the buckle too. That's, that's pretty good. Well, the buckle's very important. The buckle is so important that not only do you win your strap match, but you're like stronger for the, like the next two matches. You're, you, uh, the buckle like robs 10% of your opponent's strength on the next match. And then it, uh, and it get, and it gives you like 6% of that. Then it takes like 6% of your opponent's strength on the second match from the strap. And you get like 3% of that. Well, if it takes 10 and 6, how come you don't get all of that back? Ah, it's it's a second law of thermodynamics. You got to pay entropy. The uh, buckle rob in your strength is an irreversible process, so entropy takes the rest of it. Now I think you're just making up stuff. No, man, it's true. It's in your thermodynamics book. Anyways, back to the buckle. Do you think the buckle matters? Everybody knows the buckle matters. But does it matter? Well, of course it does. If everybody knows something, then it's true. Because if it wasn't true, then everybody wouldn't know it. The fact that it is known means it's true. Well, that's not actually how it works. Of course it's how it works. That's how everything works. If everybody knows it, it's true. So you've never heard of the, uh, the Mandela effect. The butterfly? No, 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 man. The, uh, the leader of South Africa. No, I don't, I don't know anything about no Mandela effect. Well, everybody knows Curious George has a tail. Well, of course he has a tail. He's a monkey. All monkeys have tail. Curious George never had a tail. All monkeys have tails. Curious George definitely had a tail. Well, Curious George isn't actually a monkey. He's more like a cartoon character, but he never had a tail. Monkeys have tails. Curious George is a monkey. Curious George has a tail. Uh, no, he didn't, but we're digressing anyways. Back to the buckle. Buckle. Buckle, 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 buckle. Buckle is more important than making weight or wrist curls. But does it actually matter when you're winning or losing? Of course it does. Everybody knows that. So, is it, does it, is it more significant than a coin toss? Well, of course, a coin toss is 50-50. What do you mean 50-50? Well, you flip a coin, you're going to get 50% heads, 50% tails. Every single time? Of course, that's what 50-50 means. It's statistics. You wouldn't understand. I understand because I've been in college. I've been in lots of colleges. So, you flip a coin once, it's 50% heads and 50% tails? Well, no. Not if you flip it once. Everybody knows that. And if you flip it three times, well, no, okay. It's 50% heads and 50% tails unless you flip it a non number of times. So if you flip a coin 10 times, 
you'll get five heads and five tails. Yes, on average, most of the time. On average, most of the time doesn't sound like 50%. Well, I know, it's, it's 50%, everybody knows that, and uh, I can't explain it to you. So, you're saying the same thing with the buckle. That uh, with the buckle, you could win, say, uh, say having the buckle is tails. So, if you got the buckle, which it would be tails, that would be 50%, and not having the buckle, which would be heads, would be 50%. No, because the buckle matters. Buckle, buckle, buckle. Buckle takes away the strength of your opponent and gives it to you, the non-buckle person. So you could, uh, you could test that. You could like go out and compare buckle ma strap matches against like coin toss matches. And uh, the buckle would happen more often than, the coin, than a coin flip would say. Well, of course it would, everybody would know that. But I ain't got time to go out and start flipping coins every time somebody uh, does a strap match. Well, you were quoting uh, statistics to me earlier. Do you know about the uh, Kide Square test? Chi squared test. Who's chi squared? Not chi squared isn't a person. Chi is the first letter of the Greek al alphabet, and squared means it's the letter times itself. Now, why are we talking about the Greek alphabet? And you can't multiply letters by themselves. You can only multiply numbers by themselves. Huh. You are really wearing me out. The chi squared test is a statistical tool which allows you to compare the outcomes of a series of events, compare them to the expected results of a series of events, and let you determine whether or not your results are due to randomness or, say, some undue influence. So, for instance, in your coin toss, the chi-square test would allow you to flip a, flip a coin a, a certain number of times and calculate whether you got heads or tails and whether that comported to stuff that could be due to randomness or say you developed some skill that allowed you to flip heads more often than not. Oh man, if you could figure out how to flip heads more often than not, that's something you could, uh, you could probably go to Vegas with because flipping the coins 50-50, but if I could get 60% heads, that's a 10% advantage, man. I could probably win money at that. That's exactly right. And uh, so it's also, have you ever seen it in pool where certain people can sink the eight ball on a break? I mean, I can't, but Mark Turner could. My best friend back in Michigan, uh, he used to fight a lot. My wife had to like grab our coats all the time because Mark was always starting fights. But he could sink that eight ball on the break twice, twice a night maybe, sometimes three times. Really, sink the eight ball on the break. There's, what is there? Several, that's, that's gotta be kind of random. I know, he would scratch a lot. So, so we would lose those games, but boy, when he sank that eight ball, we would win those games. We just stop talking about pool. We're talking about the buckle. Buckle, 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 buckle. So anyways, the chi-square test. So why we call it the chi-square test? Chi is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. It looks like an X. Really? Yeah, uh, fun fact. You know how sometimes Christmas is written Xmas? Yeah, I always thought that was just because people didn't like, like the religious people of it. So they were like gonna X out Christ. Well, it's actually quite the opposite. Since Chi was the first letter of the Greek alphabet, Chi came to be came to be come to be known as an abbreviation for Christ. So writing Xmas, Chimus is kind of like writing Christmas because Chi stood for Christ. So uh, it's really not taking Christ out of Christmas. It's just abbreviating it. You certainly do know a lot for somebody who can't see in color 
and uh, can't read books. Anyways, chi-squared test would allow you to com com calculate the outcomes for a series of random events and compare to what you would expect and determine if those things were due to randomness or as if you learned somehow to uh, <laughs> hey we're filming a, a video for youtube there's my son isaiah you're gonna see him on the uh cast iron dutch oven video coming up in a couple of weeks check out his flashy car his flashy truck hey uh anyways i'm making sure this guy has food so i'll see you later all right ah uh, blooper reels so, back to your coin toss. Anyways, the chi-square test would allow you to compare coin flips or buckle matches. Buckle, 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 buckle. Buckle matches and determine if the outcome was due to what, what you would expect by chance or whether or not it actually mattered. All right, I'll bite. I mean, I don't think that's true. Everybody knows the buckle matters. So if this chi-square test is real, it'll just prove that. So for instance, on a, on a chi-square test, you flip a coin 30 times, what would you expect the results to be? Piece of cake. I got, I've been to college so often, if I flip a coin 30 times, I expect it to come up heads 15 times, tails 15 times. That's exactly right. But... Do you not think it's possible that every once in a while you might flip 17 heads? It's possible, but it probably won't work because everybody knows that. Well, the chi-squared test um, will actually tell you that you could, you could throw heads, meaning you don't have the buckle Meaning, meaning you have the buckle and still win, or don't have the buckle and lose, 20 times. And that's still due to randomness. That's absolutely crap. There's no way, 20 out of 30 is like two thirds of the time. Oh, very good. Now you can do math. 20 out of 30 is, 60, is like, yeah, it's two thirds of the time. There's no way that if I got the, if my opponent has the buckle, I'm going to win way more than two-thirds of the time. Well, at two-thirds of the time, it could still be due to, it's still no better than a coin toss. A coin toss can come up 20 heads out of 30 and still be due to randomness. 21 out of 30 means something significant happened. It's not just due to chance. Chance, the pink cowboy hat wearing stud out of Florida? No, randomness. Not, not, uh the florida guy that wears a pink cowboy hat well two-thirds that i don't think i've ever seen the buckle matter two-thirds of the time well back to your coin toss when it comes to 50 50 um you know it doesn't even get to coin tossing doesn't even get to 50 50 till you get to like pretty high sample sizes like what's pretty high, like over a thousand, maybe a million would have to do the chi-square test. Um, and what we'll do is we'll have you write it out when, uh, when we're done walking so the, the people at home can see it. Boy, if this hillbilly runs into me, I'm gonna be pissed. And if he hits my dog, I'm gonna beat his ass. All right, so you actually don't get to like the 50 percent range till somewhere around a million a million at a million you're still at like 50.5 50.7 percent heads is still due to randomness when you get up to five million you now are at 50.0 something percent so you're telling me coin tossing doesn't hit to the 50.0 percent until i've got five million coin tosses that's not what I am telling you. That's what statistics is telling you. That's what the 
physical laws governing the entire universe are telling you. Five million? I don't even know if there's five million strap matches. And I don't know if there's been five million strap matches in the last 20 years if I counted all of them. Ha, ah, little light bulbs going on now, isn't there? Now you're starting to think that, hmm, maybe the buckle doesn't matter more than a coin toss. Well, I'm not thinking that. Everybody knows the buckle matters. Buckle, buckle, buckle. So anyways, why did we start at 30? Well, statistics relies on doing calculations of a sample that represents the population. And there's something magical about 30. Once you get above 30, your sample sizes start uh, representing your population more. Once you get below 30, it's kind of, it's kind of fuzzy. But it's, you know, it's still interesting to do. But in a tournament, you're going to have like somewhere between four and... I mean, to win a tournament, you're going to have six matches. You pull right and left, that's 12. That's the point. The sample sizes at a tournament are so small that anything like a buckle that only has two outcomes or a single degree of freedom isn't going to be much better than a coin toss. Well, so I mean, what are you saying? I'm saying that at, with a sample size of four, even though the statistic, the statistical sample size is a little small to be doing statistics on, at a sample size of 10 or four, you can have 75 to 80% outcome on a single degree of freedom, and it's still due to randomness. All right, say that again. I'm saying. The big, hairy German Shepherd? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. He's not bothering me. See, he's right there. All right. Okay. I wasn't worried. He, he came up close. I, I yelled at him a little and he stood away. <laughs> okay. Very, uh, very busy here walking down Muskegon River Road in Lowell, Ohio on a Friday night. <laughs> um, shit. Okay. Sample size attack. When your sample sizes are 10 or less, whether it's the buckle or a coin toss, you can throw something like 75 to 80% one way and it's still due to randomness according to the chi-square test say what that's what i'm saying flip a coin 10 times you can throw eight heads eight heads out of 10 flip a coin four times you can throw three heads out of four that's an unbelievable um deviation from the 50 percent and it would still be explainable by randomness well if 75 to 80 percent on a sample size that big is it due to randomness then yes well say it say it say it that in the guise of a tournament the buckle has to <laughs> the buckle's no better than a coin toss because 75 to 80 percent you know if the buckle's got to matter more than 75 to 80 percent to be due to something other than randomness that's a pretty hard thing to calculate <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner i'm so glad to have you on these walks Ugh, i hate these walks and i hate these talks tell the viewers to subscribe and that palin loves them i am not telling them any such thing all right, so that didn't work out quite the way I expected. Um, so the gist, of the, uh, the gist of the video is, we're talking about the chi-squared test. Chi, first letter of the Greek alphabet, squared, is equal to the sum, <laughs> Jesus, once the camera comes on, of the observed 
buckle matches minus the expected buckle matches squared divided by the expected buckle matches plus the observed no buckle matches minus the expected no buckle matches squared divided by the expected buckle matches. Now, what we have to realize is for 95% confidence, XI squared has to be less than 3.841. So, when we calculate the, the results, you know, from our matches, if it's less than 3.841, it's random. This means uh, random or chance, okay? Not, not the chubby puller from Florida with the pink cowboy hat. Uh, man, once again, I'm so not prepared. Hold on just a second. I got to go get something. Boy, this is this uh, this video has just been painful. I am so sorry. Uh, oh, ha, 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 there it is. Man, I almost should start over again. Bear with me. I'll tell you what. A year from now, you guys are gonna laugh at these blooper reels. Okay, so starting at the number of matches, if we do thirty matches. Okay, and the buckle is 20 wins with the buckle. Wait a second, what do we want to say is no buckle is better. So we'll say no buckle is 20, therefore the buckle is 10. Um, the expected buckle and no buckle would be 15, okay? Now, the note 20 out of 30 is 66.67% of the time. This ends up with a 3.37, which is less than 3.841. So out of 30 matches, okay, not having the buckle, if you win 20 out of 30 matches without having the buckle, that's no better than a coin toss. You win 21, now you did something significant. But if you only win 20 or less out of 30, it's, that's no better than a coin toss. So this is where we're gonna start talking about just how, um, we'll talk about sample size, okay? Let's say we did a thousand matches. That's a lot of matches. You, do not ha you probably do not have a thousand matches in a year. John Brzezink probably does, and he probably wins all of them, okay? If your non-buckle is 50,309, then the buckle matches is just a, uh, let me say, I wrote that wrong. I said 100,000. So then you're not, I can't fit that in there, but you're expecting 50,000. I'm just gonna put a dot there because I can't fit all these numbers in. All right? This is 50.3%. 50, 50 so at 100,000 matches, right? At 50.3% is still a 3.519, which is less than 3.841. So a coin toss doesn't even get to 50.0% yet out of 100,000 before, you know, before you can explain it as randomness, all right? So let's just jump to the chase, all right? Now remember what Palin said was for statistics, well, we'll get to the sample size. If we did five million matches, okay, the no, buck the no buckle observation of 
809, the buckle matches of, wait, I got that wrong. Wow, I am so sorry, guys. 2,000, 2 million, 500, and two, one, Jesus, what the hell did I get this wrong? Two million, five oh two, one nine one, five oh two, one nine one. This would be two, four, nine, seven, eight oh nine. Results in a 3.840, which is still less than 3.841. That gets you to 50.04%. So your coin tosses don't get, even get into the first decimal place until you get around 5 million coin tosses. Okay? So the takeaway take from this is even at 30 matches, two-thirds of them can be with or without the buckle, and it's still random. Now, what we mentioned earlier was, typically for statistics, you want your sample to be greater than or equal to 30. There's something magical about 30. But that doesn't prevent us from doing the math uh, for sample sizes less than 30. And so even at, there's 10, if we did a sample size of 10, okay, you can have eight wins, which is 80%, all right, two losses, you're expected to be five, that ends up with 3.6, okay? And at 16, it's 69%. Um, if you have 11, five, and you expect eight. If in a super match, say a best of five, if you have four matches, you can have three and one. This ends up at 75% and I can't, I'm so unprepared. I don't have the math written down in front of me right now, which this was the whole point, but it's still less than 3.841. Okay, so now down here, these are all questionable, but at 30, this is a legit number. Two thirds of your matches in 30 matches can be explained by randomness. When you get below 30, the numbers are all higher than 67%, right? So, when you're in a tournament, when you're talking two thirds or higher, the buckle has to, the buckle has to count more than 70 some percent of the effect. And I've had, there's been enough people that go out and have looked at tournaments, looked at their own matches and stuff, the buckle just does not play a 70% role in it. What I've seen from the data people have collected is I've seen the buckle, you know, apply somewhere in the like low 50% range. Low 50s, low 50s is, you gotta be in a hundred thousand some matches before low 50s is even significant. So, uh, I'm going to tag this onto the video. I will add a chi-squared uh, test video to the playlist. I, I don't, I'm not doing links and stuff yet. Um, anyways, love you guys. Bye.